light heavyweight title. I always like to come in the new champ against the champ that never lost it. But it turns out one of these two. Wow. Right. Alex Padeda, Poetan. Wow. First round KO. First big punch. That counter left hook, which is maybe the biggest weapon right now in the entire sport. Luke Thomas, Alex Padeda's. Pereira's quick and efficient KO win over Jamal Hill means blank. No one has no kickboxer, no elite kickboxer. Let me say it this way. Alex Pereira is the most successful elite kickboxer to ever cross over into MMA. Now, understand something. Um, you could debate that because you can say, well, Izzy was a champion. So here's what I'm kind of, he's like the second best to ever do it at middleweight. A guy like Pereira doesn't have all of those same accolades. He's got different ones. But remember, he was a multiple-time glory champion, and now he's been a division champion in, in two different weight classes. He's now defended this title. Uh, Just he, the fourth UFC fighter in history to defend titles in two different divisions. He's beaten five former champions. When you look at kickboxers who have crossed over, guys like Mirko Krokop, guys like Stefan Lako, guys like, you name Bob it. Sapp, Bob yeah. Sapp, Well, Bob Sapp, not really. But Melvin Manhoff, you can go down the list. They've all done well to different degrees, and they've certainly been very accomplished. I don't know anyone. I'm not saying that Pereira has the same kind of resume as Izzy. Izzy will always be, in my judgment, at worst, the second best middleweight of all time. It's hard to put Pereira necessarily in a similar kind of category just due to the short amount of time. But no one has been an elite kickboxer, made the move over to MMA, and collected as many meaningful trophies with this kind of meaningful victories, this quickly, this matter-of-factly, ever. In his eighth UFC fight. In his eighth UFC fight, five consecutive former or current champions defeated, bounced back from one of the gnarliest knockout losses in his rematch in the MMA world with Adesanya in Miami, which included the ultimate meme celebration, which then Poetan reversed on Hill in this one, which is incredible. And Luke, I don't want to harp on it, because, but I do think UFC got it wrong, way wrong. BMF should have been the main event. Max and Justin, not just the way the fight played out, but the star power, what it means, such a celebratory, fun, action, revenge, not revenge, violent moment. But yet Poetan still goes out there in the main event absolutely drills and finishes a former champion with the first punch he lands and does it in the coldest motherfucking way of eats the low blow, tells the referee, no, I got this. Let goes, me cook. Let me cook, basically, Chef Curry over here, and then delivers the punch from hell and then instantly has loaded the viral celebration of, like, you know, the payback for all the trash talk. I mean, I don't know if you saw as Poton was walking into the arena doing his his uh his name what, what, what's a, the nicest way to call that dance sort of a ceremonial tribute to the yeah yeah to the what to the to indigenous tribe, people yeah. uh mm -hmm. and then john hill's in the ring you know pretending that he's breaking the arrow and over his leg and doing that yeah. you know and I, I don't have anything against jamal hill coming in confident right there but that was such a freaking cold moment in an iced ending that he delivered nobody was ever whether it was the co-main event or the main event going to live up or to top what the bmf fight was but Pajeda came Pajeda, Potato Head Pereira came really <laughs> damn close to winning the night with this performance. And historically, it's like, what do we do with him? I mentioned he's one of now four people that defend titles in two different divisions, and the three names are, you know, all timers. Does he have the best crossover, not just as kickboxer, but like ever? And I'm comparing it to Henry Cejudo going from Olympic wrestling champion to two division UFC champion, Holly Holm going from a 17 world title wins in women's boxing and being in the hall of fame to winning a UFC title. But now he's won two UFC titles in eight fights, even though he has a game on paper, that's like one dimensional yes. that like doesn't play out. Who was the guy who came in a couple of years ago as a kickboxer? Was it Gokan? Uh, Gokan Saki. And yeah. he just got absolutely drilled and never came back. He was kind of washed by the but time he that got happens. Over, Yes. The point is that happens. He has walked in, Join Team Teixeira in Connecticut. We may have a new king of Connecticut here. And just absolutely took over the sport. Canceled out all of the negatives to his game. Takedown defense, all of that. Plays within his strengths. Is clutch. Has incredible cardio. Is mean as shit. Is really fun and viral. And is this like fun superhero that everybody loves who's actually becoming a legitimate star. Delivers an incredible viral moment that probably would have been talked about forever if Max didn't do what he did in terms of how he just sent Jamal Hill down and now teases the idea of not only I want to come back in Brazil for UFC 301, 
but I want it to be at heavyweight. And no disrespect again to Vitaly Malinkin of one championship, who is a three division champion for them. Malikin. But, right? Malikin. Yeah. But with their weight class high rehydration. Anatoly, by the way, not Vitaly. I just, did I call him Vitaly Klitschko, basically? Yeah, he did. Um, Malikin. 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 Sorry about that. When he wins three championships, you know, the middleweight one is at 205 pounds. So it's basically light heavyweight. We have a chance here. We have an opening here. We always thought it'd be Connor. It might be Poetan, the first person to legitimately walk in and have a shot at winning a third title in, in, in a third weight class. I didn't love Dana's answer afterwards at the Giddy press conference of saying, well, it seems like he's got a lot of business to do in his own division. Let's hold, like, let's slow the brakes. I feel like what Poetan has done in this short window, two championships, everything, headlining MSG, headlining 300, what else could this man do where the UFC basically should bend to his will? Oh, you want to fight to heavyweight? Then we'll get you in line. Oh, you want to turn around quick and help us 301, which is right now, I don't want to say this after 300, just blew our brains positively, but 301 on paper is one of the worst pay-per-view cards of all time. Let that man fight there. Get a heavyweight up in the bullpen. Let's make a fun attraction fight. If he wants to go for a third title, he's 36 years old. He's not getting any younger. This is the guy. Embrace him, UFC. As much as Max just doubled down on his celebrity, Poetan is here, and he's one of the most unique crossover forces the sport has ever seen. If he wants to go fight John Jones, set up the fight. Luke, I'm serious. What this guy has done in a window this big is absolutely ridiculous. Has he benefited from time and place and opportunity? Yes. But he's delivered in each of these fights, including rallying to knock out Israel Adesanya in round five at middleweight. I don't know what else to do. He shouldn't have to stay at 205. He should do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, I don't understand the whole idea of let's fast track this guy at middleweight, then fast track him at light heavyweight. You get two, obviously, you know, Izzy got the, the second of the two MMA meetings, but you fast tracked him, he got a title at middleweight. You fast tracked him at light heavyweight, he got a title there. What's the point in slowing him down now, BC? To your point... Every time you alley oop this guy, he slam dunks with style. With, with flair. style, why would you slow down the freight train now? I'm completely on board. First of all, let me just say something about you mentioned about Max should have been the main event. I agree. And Max noted pre-fight, "Hey, we're the ones where all the advertisements are based around." I think that's why he got the 600k. I think bonuses, so too. Which is why they were, they were thanking him for will. it. Squeaky wheel, squeaky wheel. Right. But getting back to Pareda here, he he did his job at main event. I mean, you go down, you look at the details of how he hand fought. Jamal Hill and how he circled out and got him like, dude, did you notice when he landed that left hook? It was wide open. He made it wide open. He made Jamal Hill make mistakes. The level of A, refinement in his game and B, BC, the ruthless efficiency. He doesn't need to land on you many times. Just needs one or two good ones. Like Wycliffe. And your shit is over, bub. Do I think he can beat Tom Aspinall? I don't think he can beat Tom Aspinall. Do I think he should get a fight against Tom Aspinall? Fuck yes! Yes. Make that fight! Are you kidding me? The, the new king of Connecticut is here, yes. Speed run this guy's UFC Hall of Fame effort. Speed run it. He, Embrace if, it. Can you People imagine love if he, him. Can you imagine, Brian Campbell, if he goes in there and takes... I, I, again, do I think it's likely? I don't think it's likely. But if he took Aspinall's head off and he becomes... That would be still an interim champion, but we would all know what that would mean. Dude, you are talking about something that is fucking basically impossible. Let him cook. He should do that to Dana. Hold on, Dana. Let me cook. <laughs> I, that's the only thing I could say negative about Dana, that comment. But I want to say this. Like, it's not just stepping up and then elevating and over-delivering. And it's like, you know, we thought wrestlers were going to take him down. We thought all these things. No. They still he might. By the way, they still might. They, they still, still might. might. And I know that at times he's benefited from opportunistic matchmaking, but he went in there and delivered. He's a one of one. Embrace that UFC. Again, he's not getting any younger, although he does operate in the heavier divisions. I just think Chuck Mindenhall deserves the ultimate high five, not just for being a great guy, Luke, and a great analyst, but on pregame preview a couple years ago, and I always reference this, he said ahead of that first Adesanya Poetan fight, we think the story's all about Izzy and redeeming himself against the, 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 the bad guy at the end of the movie in his kickboxing career. It turns out this was Poetan's story all along. And he's right, and I don't say that to diminish what Adesanya has achieved or what he will continue to go on to achieve. But, Luke, this is the ultimate storybook crossover. And the fact that he actually got knocked out in the most vicious and viral way in the middle of that and just said, oh, F it, I'll go up to light heavyweight and beat Prohatska, beat Blahovich, like beat all these fucking legitimate-ass names has a win over Sean Strickland. It's like... This is exactly, if you're the UFC, who you want to be, an organic superstar who everyone respects. He's He understands humor. He's got the, the, the Easter Island statue gimmick going. Like, he gets it. He likes 
you know, attractive women too, Luke. Not that that should be a part of my uh, analysis. But again, going back to the Max thing, Poetan also wins in a way that speaks to his personality. You know, again, doesn't say a lot, but gets it done. Doesn't say a lot. He's not a vault. Max is more of a volume play in striking. Obviously, that power is now coming along. Poetan's not a volume play. He's not a volume play guy. He's not trying to do a ton of different stuff. He has a very smooth game and one or two points of contact and the whole shit comes undone. And I get what Dane is ultimately saying. We still have to do Jones Stepe, even though we don't. And then we still have to who try, gives a fuck about try that fight? to make Aspinall versus, you know, but Aspinall is the one who's left out of this picture because of that fight. If we have to build toward, you know, give him a setup. Give also, him a setup in Brazil. I'm, give him a heavyweight setup in Brazil. Fine. Derek Lewis, anyone, just do it. Yes. Last thing I want to say about this. You had mentioned that we have to give credit to Justin Gaethje, which we do. He made... Max is right. It takes two to tango. It's not just that he had to offer the opportunity, but he had to fight a certain way to make that outcome. That's a real thing. Listen, Jamal Hill, this was a bad loss. But number one, he came back to me on an expedited timeline. I'm not sure that was the best thing for him in terms of winning and losing. He might have gotten a big bag for it, so it's a you know complicated call. But for, for winning purposes, it didn't do him any favors. And listen, we didn't really know how much rivalry there was going to be between the two. I think his antics, while some people are calling him cringe and they're killing him for it, I think it brought the best out of Poetan, to be perfectly honest with you. So I give credit to both Justin Gaethje as well as Jamal Hill yes. for trying to make in their own ways the fight's bigger and better than they and ordinarily look, would I'm not been. mad that Jamal Hill got this fight from a Jamal Hill standpoint. He's an opportunist. They said, can you turn it around in time? Sure. He turned around from a serious injury very fast. I know it didn't go his way, but I respect that just the same.